guys. Okay, now I'm back. <laughs> yeah, every single time, every single time something technical happens. It It's like without fucking fail. So anyway, here I am. Aggravated. Aggravated, y'all. How are you? I'm waiting. And now my eyes twitching. Aren't you sick of me saying that? My eyes twitching. <laughs> the electrical's going out. It's like I'm insane. How is everybody? And my nose is still stuffy. This is going on one year. I've been here a year. My nose has been stuffy an entire year. So yeah, there you go. Hi, you guys. I thought I would come on because I'm disappearing till next week. So having said that, I thought I would come on. How is everybody? Yeah. Oh, good evening. New Zealand. Yeah. Hi, y'all. I love saying y'all. Boo. Denver, Jersey, everywhere. Michigan. <laughs> All of that, all of that. Oh my God, right? Um, yeah, I need to see you today. <laughs> I, calcium, calcium. Yeah, I probably need calcium too. Whatever. I don't take I don't take any vitamins anymore. Anymore, I don't take them. You know why? Because I can't just mentally can't. I just can't. Like, whatever. I'm just saying. You finally made it. How is everybody? I know this chat goes so fast. Everyone's told me how to stop it. I go on to my video settings and it never corrects. So it's just like we're insane over here on this channel. We have ridiculous chat. It speeds by and that's what happens. Welcome to my world. Um, yeah, I've tried to fix it. It just does what it wants because I'm filming on my camera, not my computer. So, um, yeah, Utah, just planning a trip through Utah soon. Not right now, but, you know, when I get back. Am I going a bit viral? <laughs> Sounds like herpes to me. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Oh, my God, stop with the books open. If you guys, oh, my God, if you guys text me, am I, can I give you a reading? I will never read you, okay? You know why? Because it gives me anxiety when people ask me to work. <laughs> it gives me anxiety. Like reading wise. I can only handle so much. And like I'm not like around the clock. I've said this so often and people don't like listen. I don't know. They just think I'm there to read them like a clown. Which is fine. But this clown can't work all the time. So clown posse closed for now. Mm. I don't know. I try. But it gives me anxiety. It actually gives me anxiety, y'all. Literally gives me anxiety. Uh, so I'll, if I get a text, it's like, would you give me a reading? I don't know. Would you fucking suck my dick? I don't know. I mean, why are you texting on the text number for... I mean, it's constant with some people. They get the number and they fucking text. It's like, I have other phones. I will never answer you. And if you bug me enough... I will fucking block you. That's how I feel. <laughs> I know P. Diddy was kind of an easy read, really, when his mother of his children came through. So, I mean, no, everybody, like, it's like, come on, jump, monkey, jump, do it, read. Yeah, I can't all the time. Anyway, I'm, <laughs> oh my God, I do put up the clothes sign. No one cares. They don't care. And then somebody was really nice, and oh no, it's weird to text. Like, it's my texting work phone number, as in text questions. But, like, if you're going to text me to ask, like, why, A, would you be so greedy you thought you could jump the line? Because people are in line waiting, right? So wouldn't they, the ones that have already paid for readings, be the ones going? Or should I just drop everything for you because you're special? Yeah, entitled, specially entitled. Oh, God, it makes me insane. So sometimes I throw my phone at the door. That's why I have more than one phone because I've been known to fucking throw it at the four, <laughs> the door. <laughs> um, oh, it gives me anxiety. 40 years. I'm just saying 40 years I've been doing this. 40 years. Four zero. Yeah, I don't know if they're dumb. I think they're self-entitled. I think I actually think they're entitled. If you listen to my live streams, you know I get hysterical about being forced into work. Um, meaning I have to have a balance. I have to live my life. Like y'all have to live your life and I'm not, you know, whatever. Being alive gives me anxiety. Me too. Me too. I've thrown them at the wall. Yeah. <laughs> I've thrown them at the wall. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. I don't even know who Ryan Garcia is. Yeah. Isn't that cute? TikTok shop y'all. 
But yeah, have you guys noticed? Have you guys, before I even start, have you guys, right, Bohemian Grove. Okay, yeah, I don't even know the boxer. Yeah, I don't even know who that is. I can't keep up with everybody. Everybody's a pile of shit. Like anybody who's in celebrity is a piece of crap now. That's all I can say. I can't say anything else anymore. They consistently ad nauseum, don't surprise me. And it's like unbelievable. I know they do think you're there to serve them. I know, right? Can you imagine phoning up a restaurant and go, I know you're closed, but can you get out of bed and make me a cheese sandwich? Like I'd shoot the person. <laughs> Be like, you want a cheese sandwich? I'll give you a fucking cheese sandwich. And that's what, um, no, I haven't heard of Timothy Ferguson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nobody lets me relax. Yeah, this is bubble bath and it matches little meadow. So yeah, my, my life is about little meadow right now. And I'm going away for, um, I'm filming some, not filming. How do I want to word this? I'm on an adventure that I'm going to be like filming. So again, I'm going to be setting myself on fire soon. So we know how that goes. I do that shit. So I've been practicing. This is what I'm doing. Um, yeah. So your sister, uh, Laura Gillian. Hi, Laura Gillian. Hi, Laura. I'll do that. That's fun. That's easy. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. So anyway, this year I have short nails so that I don't catch my nails on fire. Because that happened last year. So, like, there's that. <laughs> there's that. Um, oh, yeah, the TI. Yeah, they run that shit. God knows what the fuck I said in that one. That was a very strange show. I've been fighting with John all night before I filmed that. So, I drove myself to LAX with John and I fighting the entire time. Jason, I remember it so well. Jason was driving Uber. He was walking in and out of the house picking people up, driving Uber, and I was going to do the T.I. and Tiny show, and then um, that was in Georgia, so I had a five-hour flight. John kept me up all fucking night. I love Little Meadow so much. Um, yeah, John kept me up in one of his tirades. Um, anyway, that was that. So I go to Jason. I go, don't listen to your father. So I called him from upstairs, Jason. I said, whatever your father's saying, don't listen to him. And I drove myself to LAX myself, obviously, which is like two hours at like three o'clock in the morning, right? And <laughs> I know this is when I was shooting that show, maybe 2016 or something. Anyway, the Zaniqua is born on Jason's birthday. She's a July 14th and um, a sweet child. So anyway, I was literally... um. <laughs> I got to LAX. I got on the plane with a whole plane load full of female basketball players. So, of course, I was like tiny, super tiny, short. And they were these college basketball player girls. And that was really fun. So, five hours later, I get off the plane. The producer picks me up. I go right on camera. I have no idea what I said. I don't even care what I said. I don't fucking know what I said. But what I did say is that she would have a baby like two years after and also filed for divorce. And I think she had the baby and was filing for divorce. Anyway, when I went to the door, her little son was really cute. And I forget which one it was, but he was about six or seven. And he was so cute. Um, and I was putting my makeup on downstairs and I was in his, um, you know, Stella shot for PTSD. No, I have PTSD. P P yeah, that's it. Post traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> I have it. Um, but anyway, yeah, the little boy was so sweet and he was really kind of cute and Mr. Flirty Pants little. I think he was a Leo and he was so cute and flirty, cute little boy. I cannot remember which one of her sons it is, but he was really a love, a little love bug. And um so I enjoy talking to the kids. That's always my funnest thing when I see little kids because I miss my boys so much when they were little. You know, when they became, like, I think Jason was like 19 or 20 at the time I shot that. So he's like 31. It's probably 10 years ago um, now. Or maybe he was 21. I don't know. It's at least 10 years ago. Anyway, when my boys were little, I loved them and was with them 24-7. And then when they got their own lives, um, I kind of felt alone because, you know, they got their own lives, right? And then Keithy passed, so we know that was really alone. But um, anyway, I remember Jason, he's like, I don't, I don't listen to him. <laughs> he was just walking in and out of the house. 
So I filmed that, but when I answered the door, so I had to go walk up and answer the door, right? I mean, uh, knock on the door. Um, it was really strange because her eyes, Tiny's eyes, she'd had the transplant and I was freaked out. She's a very nice woman, but I mean, at that particular time, I know what's been said about her, et cetera. And I believe everything that's said about every celebrity because that's how they get where they're going. However, having said that, her mom was there, but her eyes, it was so fucking bizarre. Her eyes, like I couldn't connect with them. I know, I love being a mom. That's the only thing I did like right. I made my children, didn't drink, didn't smoke, had them, um, and had them natural and, you know, tried, tried. Um, but, and was I talking about Major? Yeah, oh, such a cute little guy. Um, I liked him a lot. He was a sweet kid and he was so helpful. Like he, he come down, he's like, are you putting more makeup on? And I'm like, unfortunately, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> um, and yes, yeah, she had the, she had the eye transplant. I know, but it, it was very jarring to look at for me because, um, if I'm looking at your eyes, I want to be able to communicate with you. And there's sort of a telepathy that goes on behind the scenes yeah, boy moms, I know, right? So cute. I, I mean, I miss my, my Keith was darling. My Jason was darling. Um, Still is darling, both my boys. But I mean, when they were little, they were really sweet. Like Jason was attached at my hip and Keith was like my purse. I never put Keith down. Like Keith came out and I'm like, yeah, you're not going anywhere. And, you know, <laughs> I stuck him under my arm and that was it. Jason down here and Keithy here. And that's how I moved through the world. And it was the best thing ever. Her eyes were like, I guess maybe they were supposed to be blue. I'm not actually sure, but they were, um, um, like milky and there was no substance behind them. Like, you know, you see a sparkle in people's eyes, even if they're old, even if they're young, there's a sparkle. Mom of three boys and one girl, lucky mom, Angela. Yeah. My Keithy had seafoam green eyes, blue green eyes. And my, my birth mom did too. But anyway, it was very, um, it was very strange to look at her eyes because I could not connect while talking to her. So I would say, I don't think it matters what color your eyes are. Like, look what they're due to everybody. If you're dark skin, they want you to have light eyes. If you don't really have light eyes, like, don't worry about it or whatever. But they they want you to like have surgery to fix your eyes. Like are any of us born okay? But you know what came to my mind? So yeah, I'm definitely a boy mom and a girl grandma. So I love it. Um, yeah, I'm so happy. I know wear contacts if you're going to do anything and I don't even, oh, 23, happy birthday to your son. Oh my goodness, 23. Yeah, no soul in her eyes. That's right. I could not feel it. If I can't feel it, I, I don't know. That's her choice, obviously, but I find it interesting. And then something occurred to me. So Michael Jackson, which has nothing to do with this because I don't know him. But anyway, Michael Jackson did so much to his face. Like there was teenage Michael Jackson and then suddenly he was, you know, whatever. Right. So what if they do these surgeries and tell you they have these surgeries when they're actually making clones? That occurred to me. Mm hmm. Because Michael Jackson, although it was his voice, I don't actually think it was him. So, I mean, he had so many surgeries. Did you see the interview with him where he's like, that's just stupid <laughs> in his voice? He's like, that's just stupid. I haven't had any work done. They say that I have this. And I, I'm like, dude, look in the mirror. You have had work done. I mean, it doesn't matter if you've had work. You can change your whole fucking face. I was just taught, yes, yeah, who had the soulless eyes? T.I., um, Tiny, T.I.'s wife. It, it's not that she had soulless eyes. She had the eye transplant. I wasn't familiar with it. So when she came to the door, I was like, I was actually like pushed back energetically, which was interesting. Once I talked to her, she was fine. But um, it kind of blocks you from being able to connect. And this is like, you can't connect with them. And this I began to understand, right? I began to understand that the powers that be, so the controllers, because we are caged animals. I have to always put that in every night. But anyway, I start to understand they don't want us connecting 
because we can connect on an intuitive telekinetic kind of way and they don't want that because we'd be able to align ourselves so i know we've always been breaking out but they don't want us so like michael jackson's face and all of the stuff that he did is very interesting because i think when they clone them i think when that happens or they present a a alternative person to do the to do the public things to do this and to do that and how sad is it that he didn't think he had plastic surgery i mean i'm sorry but like you look nothing like yourself really um at all right like nothing so yeah abuse and trauma sure it's it's yeah i like raccoons will i ever find one ryan just go look in any drainage center in los angeles you'll find one um but uh, Jamie Foxx may be a clone. His tattoos are missing. So it's weird to me. It is dysmorphia, but why do we have dysmorphia and why do those people have dysmorphia? Why? What, what in them and their ability to produce income to the handlers, okay, the puppeteers, that's what I'm going to call them, the agents, the managers, the gravy train, the puppets, okay, the puppeteers and the actors, entertainment, music, whatever are the, the, are the puppets so when your puppet is michael jackson and his songs are worth billions okay and he owns the beatles uh catalog etc then why not kill him because he's worth more dead than alive and that's the problem okay i think that the usher's a pedophile i think they're all pedophiles they all use sodomy ritual as a form of blackmail as a this that to get ahead children that have been sexually abused and it's part of mk ultra disassociate disassociation gives them the ability to compartmentalize okay so when i worked at children of the night and yeah they hate me saying that but i did and i can prove it but anyway when i worked there and the kids that worked as prostitutes under the age of 18 and i told you all about the story about the one kid that was 12 year old girl who men would fucking rape. She would take money for it and she would wet her bed at night and suck her thumb sitting on the couch beside me. So that was actually a thing and it was a transit transitory shelter so kids would come in and go out. And lots of celebrities were on our books as being interested in that, okay? I know, she was 12, seriously. And I was like, who's fucking her? And, 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 I mean, no, I mean, who's who's doing that? Like. Which one of your daddies, brothers, uncles, children, sons, who's doing that? Who is doing that? Who's doing it? Oh, my God. And then, bye, Robin. See you. Um, yes, they do do it to their own kids. They absolutely do it to their own kids. It's part of their ritualization. They believe in that. Okay, I'm going to just give you an example. Because everybody says, I'm always moving into the camera, sorry. <laughs> Again, the most unprofessional production. That's this channel. All right, so what they do is, Nova Scotia, what they do is they ritually sexualize their children. It's like going to midnight mass. Why would you drag your family to midnight mass? Do you think that really it matters if you're Catholic and you go to midnight mass? I mean, is that really, why midnight mass? I understand what they say, but I'm just saying, is that really something you got to drag your kid out for? Like, why? So it's the same thing. Kathy O'Brien, a great example. The, the reason that they follow through with this is if they have sons, they pimp their kids out. Here's how it happens in my belief system. Now, Quincy Jones was known for uh, Natasha Kinski, his daughter with whoever, um, said they were lovers. Um, Jane, is it, no, Jane Seymour, the model. Um, I can't think of her name. The model, the one that used to date Charlie Sheen. If they dated Charlie Sheen, you know there's something wrong with them, including Heather Locklear. You want to know why they look like that at a certain age? Ask them what they're hiding from in the mirror. What are you hiding from in the mirror? What are, what behavior are you hiding from in the mirror? They pass their children around. We all act shocked by it. But even, and go all the way back to my generation of old people, okay? <laughs> go back to the old people generation, all right? Yes, Heidi Klum. That isn't obvious. Heidi Klum, how did she get so famous? I'm just asking. 
But, and I don't know which kid they go after and who they go after and how they go after it. But look at Army Hammer. I always say that name wrong. Arm and Hammer. Army Hammer. Good looking. Six foot five. Okay, Denise Richard. Army Hammer Cannibal. Where did he get that from? No, not Steph. Yes, yeah, Stephanie Seymour. I thought you were going to say Jane. Stephanie Seymour. Yes, exactly. <laughs> don't make me fuck you up saying that. <laughs> um... I'm almost 60, but back in the day, Mackenzie Phillips, but all of them, all of them, every single one of them understand you are not getting where you're going without handing your kids over to be sexualized. Mick Jagger and Mackenzie Phillips. No one likes to think that. I love Mick Jagger as much as the next person in the Rolling Stones. However, why, when he was 15, when she was 15, was he telling her he was waiting to fuck her when the dad, John Phillips, who was also fucking his daughter, and they say that it's a him thing. No, it's a ritualization thing, and they all know they fucking do it. Miley Cyrus, is this not obvious? And just asking. Um, so Mackenzie Phillips straight up says Mick Jagger bagged her in the kitchen when she was 15. And then the men out there will say, but she looked 23. Here's the thing, men that are over the age of 20. Date women. Steven Tyler's another one. Date women that are your own age. Like, you know when some... I, I know when someone's younger. I may not know their age if they're, you know, 20, 30, 40, whatever, because I can't tell anymore. But, um, yeah, normally they're firstborn and they're fir firstborn, firstborn boy. Jimmy Page. De Niro's a pile of shit. De Niro is garbage, Okay, De Niro, Brooke Shields' mother, I mean, was terribly abusive to her. Um, yeah, why do I have to be careful? Why do I have to, when you say, I, I got to school you on this because nobody in my real life tells me to be careful because it's a fucked up statement. As my son, Keith, told me, don't be saying be careful. It's a word spell implying something's going to happen. First of all, don't make me say it again. I don't give a shit what happens. Okay, so I'm not afraid. Number one, hi from Burbank, y'all. <laughs> I'm not afraid. And number two, why do I have to be careful? That is like fucking telling people they need health insurance when they're fucking healthy because what if? I don't live that way. I don't have health insurance. I don't give a shit. And I don't fucking, I, what do you mean be careful? Why the fuck wouldn't I be careful? What do you think I'm going to do? Play with knives on the street? I mean, what am I going to do? Stand on my car and try to fly off it? What does it mean be careful? What you mean indirectly under the guise of trying to be helpful is shut the fuck up. Someone's going to hurt you. So let them hurt me. I'm still going to talk. So I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. People have an issue with that. Be careful. Oh, you don't want to say that. Yes, the fuck I do. Yes, the fuck, say it with me. Yes, the fuck, I do want to say that. And I will say it, okay? Because it's been my experience. And here's another thing energetically that reads true metaphysically. If the opposing side that you are in a spiritual war with, okay? So the idiots that fucking rule the entertainment business, okay? The piles of pedophilic shit that harm your children and try to transgender everybody, Okay, because they pray to the Baphomet, a goat, a man, tits, and a dick. Yes, let's have our children all follow that line of thinking because that's clever. Anyway, those people have a right to shove that shit down our throats. And you're saying I should be careful because I'm speaking truth? If I'm speaking truth, I'm allowed to stand up and slap them back with it. Okay, like, like, hello, hello. What I mean, sorry, I go off on a tangent with that. And they're, I know they'll all say, oh, you should be careful. You shouldn't talk about this. I know we're all going to die. Who gives a fuck? What do you think? I value anything right now? I don't value anything. So fucking shut up yourself. You be careful. You be fucking careful. You be careful. Um, <laughs> so what? Because you're teaching people to be bullied, to never speak up for what's going on. To never tell the truth because they got to be careful. Nah, 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 nah. Mm -mm. That's why this world is the way it is because people are cowards and only thinking of themselves. If you understood that you can't die, you'll leave this physical form. I mean, after 50, who cares? 
All right. Like, I mean, yeah, you do want to see your family, but if I don't, I'm going to be on the other side with my other family. So who cares? If you understand that you never die, you continue to transform and move energy in a different way, then there would be nobody shutting their mouths because they're cowards. People who keep quiet are cowards, pussies, and bitches because they're only thinking of themselves. That's why they took the vaccine. They wanted to keep their fucking job rather than defend what was morally correct for their co-workers. Eat that. Swallow that. You caused that problem. Not the people talking about it. Oh, God, I'm on a tangent. Okay. All right. Over the tantrum. All right. So anyway, um, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, that's why women continue to get raped by men that are in positions of power because scared babies, cowards who are afraid for themselves. Oh, but I have to have a job. I have to pay my bills. I have to protect my family. No, you have to speak the truth. You, ha I know, right, Carmen? I mean, what the fuck is wrong? Carmen's not a coward. Wee's not a coward. Barbie, uh, Bobby's not a coward. Other people are cowards. They're only thinking, you're only thinking of yourself. You're like, I'm, I know. I, I. Not everyone that took the jab is, some people were actually scared and believed what they said, what the government said. But you should know if your government's encouraging it and there's no data on it, why would you listen to them? And it's not, mandatory that you have to do it. It's not mandatory. It's, it's not a law. And even if it is a law, you have body autonomy. You can have an abortion. You don't have to take a jab. You can have a full term abortion. You don't have to take a fucking injection by being raped by a needle in your body. Just, just look at it that way. You would win in court. You don't have to do it. Yeah. See, you have to now at this point, when somebody in your family gets sick from that jab, whoever just said they got bullied by their family, laugh in their face and say, yeah, that's your own fault because you fucking did it without having the information. I have no tolerance for it. They shut, but see, it's part of a bigger agenda. So to be fair, they brought all these scared. Now, all of the people that were frightened, I'm totally on a separate topic, but all of the people that were frightened must not have any faith because they must literally not believe in anything because they think a fucking jab from the government, a bunch of clowns. And yeah, see there, I didn't take a jab either. I got, I got in more fucking fights with people and called more names because I wasn't wearing a mask. They clearly said, because I showed it on a live stream, the mask says does not protect against virus. So what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, Robin, they may think you're mentally ill, but who injects, why don't you inject yourself with heroin? I mean, if we're going to inject ourselves with stuff, I'd like mine to have a little kick, okay? A little bit more than coffee, so we could do like a speedball or something. I mean, God, and the celebrities, if you don't understand, celebrities are social engineers. She does it, I want to do it. They have a Louboutin, I want a Louboutin. That's why nine out of 10 times, you won't see me wearing anything with a label on it because I don't want to wear anything with a label on it, because I'm not here to profit their child trafficking, Balenciaga, all of these businesses. Now, even the hotels, and this is something I didn't even understand, because I, of course, have stayed in hotels everywhere, right? But an eight ball, right? <laughs> but shoot it in a needle, exactly. I mean, I'm just saying. Like, if you have no problem putting an injection in your arm, and again, I went to high school with a girl that posted on Facebook. This made me insane. She's like, I'm doing my part. I'm like, you're a fucking asshole. You're not doing any part. You're selfish. She works in the nursing profession. She broke out in a rash and went and got a second vaccine. I'm like, you are you should not have children. She does have children, but she should never have had children. Never have had children. Ever. Ever. <laughs> Like you have allergic reaction and then you go do it again. Let me do that. I'm allergic to shrimp. Let me eat a whole plate full, blow up and have my throat closed and break out in hives because, because why? What, what is the difference? Like you would look at them and go, are you fucking stupid? Um, so it's just bizarre. I got a tumor from the, oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. I got COVID four times. It's called the flu. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a concocted flu, but Look who's in 
charge of it, okay? Fauci, and who was in charge of AIDS? Fauci. So Fauci is continually, continually pushing drugs, lying about it. <laughs> it didn't give me a rash. It gave my friend from high school a rash. I didn't take the jab. I'm not an idiot. Sorry. You could take it if you want. I understand why some people did. If it's truly your choice to do it, there's no problem. But don't bully me into it by shutting my business down, screaming at me, telling me I'm, I'm responsible for killing your grandmother. Well, good. Maybe she needed to fucking go then. I don't know what to say to that. That's the answer you're going to get from me. If you say it's my responsibility to look out for you during a pandemic. No, it's your responsibility to look out for you. Okay. You learn that in Al-Anon. You learn that in AA. I'm not responsible for anyone but myself and small children, obviously. Um, but like now my eye is still twitching, y'all. So <laughs> I'm just like, they kept going, you could kill someone's grandmother. I'm like, well, they're a grandmother. So like, they're going to die anyway. <laughs> like, uh, I'm a grandmother. I'm old. I mean, and like, I understand I'm not 90, but you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're a grandma... Do you have a right to stay around? If you're if the people that died had other ongoing issues, and by the way, they put shit down their throat and blew their lungs up. They're ridiculous. Just saying. And yes, I do know it's very sad some people died, but this was a concocted thing. And Fauci's, you know, whatever. Fauci is part of that. And yeah, I don't know what to say. Anyway. I totally got off the point, like a nut job. This is my live stream. This is why I can't do them. I'm like insane. I read one comment. Why does my eye twitch? I don't know. It's been twitching for a while. It twitches and doesn't. I'm assuming it's stress from the people that asked me to read them. <laughs> asked me for a reading and I start twitching like this. Um, uh, I'm sorry I had to say it. But yeah, no, it's sad when your grandparents die because you love them. But, like, they're, like, I get, like, when, you know, I mean, I don't know what to say. Uh -huh. mm. Like, you're going to die. Plenty of people die under the age of 10. That's what they do. My kitty's hiding over there. She knows she's going to the kitty sitter. So, yeah, because I don't leave her alone when I'm gone because, we, you know, anything could happen. She has a really nice kitty sitter, so... I send her there with, with my kitty sitter and her daughter, and she enjoys it. Take all her food. I have to sneak her into the carrier. Yeah, we go to get our nails cut first, her nails, because they're huge. So I take her to the vet on my way to the kitty sitter. So she thinks she's going to the vet, and she's hysterical, but she's just getting her nails clipped. And then when she gets to the kitty sitter, she's like, oh, it's fun. It's playtime. So that's what we do. That. I know. How does anyone not know this is in purgatory? Her name is Tallulah. Mew, Mew, Lou, Louboutin, whatever. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Um, yeah, exactly. So anyway, when, when you look at people like Michael Jackson, getting back to the initial concept, when you look at people like Michael Jackson, ask yourself, what is all that facial plastic surgery? That's a lot more than dysmorphia, like a lot more. I did a show one time. I was at Dr. Drew's. I did a show with Tan Mom. You remember her, Tan Mom? Do you remember that girl? The one with the real um, crazy tan. Anyway, I kind of didn't read her. Like I started talking to her and I was like, I cannot talk to her because she, like, she's not right in the head. Therefore, nothing, I, like I'm just not going to do this. Anyway, Drew told me that she had... Um, a brain injury from some sort of abuse, but part of her brain was missing. So her over obsessive tanning was part of a trauma response due to a brain injury, actually, I'm assuming. So, I mean, you know, like she was tan as fuck. Yeah, too much tan. But Kind of like I felt badly for her because that's a brain energy. Are you white or are you just light skinned? If I look white, then I'm white, right? Doesn't matter what my heritage is. Why do you care? Is he going to tell me white privilege again? These fucking people, white privilege. Isn't that racist in and of itself? Like, <laughs> if you're saying, I had a friend that is an ex friend that used to say, Oh, you have white privilege. And I'm like, Really? 
I have white privilege. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever that means. Now it's pretty privilege, white privilege. And I'm like, were you, was your ass born in an orphanage? Because mine was. Were you alone for the first year? Because I was. Yeah. Do you have two kids that passed? Because I do. So my privilege is what? My privilege is what? So yeah, I mean, were you like, did you, I, I don't know what to say. Like, yeah, I don't know what to say. Um, but anyway, <laughs> they say that. No, I know. Yeah, the light skin. I can't help who my parents are. So when you say that, you're racist as fuck. What is it? If I look white, then I'm white, right? I mean, if you're black and if you're not black and you look black, people will see you as black, right? So like, I don't know what to say. Yeah, I know. Yeah, billionaire privilege. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, I look pretty white. Like I'm a fucking Viking, Nordic, Irish, smidgen of that asshole British in there. But I'm a, I mean, Bobby's done my DNA. So like... Yeah. So think of me as a fucking angry Viking. Okay. And a drunk one without getting drunk. Irish. Irish Viking, a smidgen of British in there. <laughs> so that's pretty much fucking white. And I'm not going to apologize for being white because I had no control over who pushed me out of there, wherever they pushed me from. So like, you understand the government made up all that shit, right? Right. Uh, French, German, Aries here. Oh my God, you Nazi. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to say it. Oh God, John is an Aries Austrian. <laughs> you know who I call him, Scandinavian, yeah. Viking I prefer though. I like the aggression of Viking. I'm aggressive, so yeah, that's true. But I don't know what to say. Yeah, Cherokee Indian, whatever you are is what you are. What does it fucking matter? Like, can you change your skin? That's the bullshit they told you about Michael Jackson is that he bathed in, I forget what they call it, the, the lightning um, stuff, but I think he was a clone at that point. I don't even think that that's true. I think they tell you that's true. So I look Nordic. Thank you, Luna. <laughs> Native Irish. There you go. That's a nice mix too. I'm black and I love you. Yeah, ignore these people. God, I mean, Jesus. You know, I'm you're right. I'm a child of the universe. Yeah, the bleach, but it's not called bleach with Michael Jackson. And he, he said he had like vitiligo or whatever, where the skin, melasma, the opposite of it, excuse me, where your dark skin peels off, which should just fucking show you that skin doesn't matter. Because if you can tan, like tan mom or anybody that's tanning out there, then aren't you essentially wanting to be dark because you're tanning? I'm just asking. Dominican, beautiful. Everybody's beautiful. Everybody's beautiful. You're either a good person or you're not. I don't really care what your skin looks like. But I've been told by some of my Hispanic friends that I had white privilege, which made me fucking go crazy on them. Crazy. Okay, like imagine being in front of my face saying that shit. And I'm like, Damn, we went through the same kind of childhood. What are we even talking about? You know, I mean, what? 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 Now I'm twitching. Look, it's literally twitching. <laughs> I used to like rollerblading. I might injure myself doing that now. Um, I know privilege has, I know, priv <laughs> black and Chinese, beautiful. What, what the fuck does it matter? I mean, Trinidad. Uh, what does it matter what we are? But anyway, what I was going to talk about, somebody mentioned up here that little Madeline Soto. Is it Soto? That little girl whose birthday, she turned 13 on the 22nd of February. 22nd of February. I'm green. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> they should go back. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. This, is somebody, and he, this dude would keep saying it. I'm like, shut the fuck up with that. White privilege, you stupid. They just show, it shows me your ignorance. Like, if you ask if I'm, like, light-skinned or white. I mean, if I look white to you, then I'm fucking white. Like, I think you could tell if I wasn't, but it could be wrong. You know? Yeah, I do know of Donald Marshall. Yeah, she had her birthday on February 22nd. Um, and I wanted to talk about that because I'm like, what kind of mother? And I do blame... <laughs> that's right. I do blame the mother in this. I have more rage, like I, oh, this is weird. From my childhood, I expect men to do this kind of thing. And that's a terrible thing to say because I know all you men don't do that. But the way I was raised, the men are whatever they are. Anyway, so when a man acts that way, 
That has always been my experience, okay? Like, the men are the predators. However, these fucking women who... Oh, the mom absolutely knew. These fucking women that marry a guy. And that's what I was talking about before I went on a tangent about don't tell me to be careful. <laughs> oh my God, I'm ADD. Anyway, when you talk about grooming children, there is a way of grooming them where they get used to abuse in front of their face in very like minimal, not, not too intrusive, but very minimal in that like when you go into some families where the father walks around naked and there's boy, like, what's his name? The actor said he walks around naked in front of his daughter. What the hell is his name? Um, that guy they say is straight that's really gay. What's his name? You know who I mean? The guy that did the Leonard, uh, was it Leonard Bernstein movie? You know who I mean, him. Anyway, that guy, um, the actor, Bradley Cooper. I, I can't stand his face. Like I look at his face, I'm like, oh, I want to rip his eyeballs out. That's a personal thing though. It's not really his fault. But he talks about walking around naked in front of his daughter and said his father did it. Well, here's the thing. His daughter's six or seven or maybe even nine, whatever she is. At least, but she's a young woman. And she doesn't want to see your dick, even though you're her father. Because then we're getting into, yes, he said it. He said his father did it with him. And there's still a difference between adult man, child man. However, when child man, like Bradley Cooper, hits 9, 10, 11... He don't want to see his dad's dick either. Like, put some pants on. You, you, what? Like, it's called grooming. Just so we're very aware of it. You may think you're all, well, they, in Hollywood, the nudity thing and, you know, the this and the that. You're grooming your children to accept adult men with no clothes on. And then it becomes easier to touch your child. Do you get what I'm saying? So they don't think anything of it if your uncle, cousin, whoever is walking around naked. And I'm not talking about you're in your underwear with your bra on and, you know, the phone rings back in my time frame when there weren't cell phones. And you run to get the phone out of the bathroom and you're putting your clothes on and you run down to the dryer. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about literally walking around, continually indoctrinating them into being visually okay with seeing that. I don't want to see your dick if I'm a kid. I don't care how much I love you. I don't care if you call me a prude. I don't care. If you want your daughters to learn to be okay with themselves, you know that that's private, okay? It's not for daddy to be walking around naked like that, even if she were a boy. And I'm not talking, you know, once in a while either. I'm talking he literally fucking says this, okay? Like, dude, you just said that out loud. Like, because your dad did it with you. Did you ever think you were groomed, Mr. Cooper, by your weirdo father? Oh, but nothing happened. You don't know what happened. You don't know what happened because it was all fine. And the person walking around naked, are they doing it for their own sexual gratification because they know that they're kind of flashing. There is a thing where people go out and flash. I've seen a guy on our hiking trail. When when my kids were um, growing up, when we lived in Burbank, always on the full moon, there was this dude. He'd pull his pants down on the trail. And at first I was like, I don't want to go by him. But he was like blocking my run because there's only one trail. Like I was on that trail. Finally got used to him. I'm like, this dude comes out and is probably on psych meds. And I'll just walk through the bushes and he can pull his pants down. I don't care. And it got to be funny, like, you don't even scare me. However, they're doing it for their own sexual response, okay? So that's a form of grooming, okay? I'm not, and again, I'm not talking occasionally. Yes, but, but not with your child. You may be an exhibitionist, so go out and exhibit yourself with adults. Why your child? Why your child? Well, of course, there's no mother's. Again, we get back to Shirley Temple Black and we get back to the baby burlesques, right? Shirley Temple Black was in all these movies on the good... Okay, I've just got to say this. <laughs> on the good ship lollipop, this little six-year-old, four-year-old when she started, three, sucking a lollipop. You know what that reminds you of, right? Sucking a phallic object on camera with movies that had 40-year-old men with no fucking women in them. Never is there a bloody woman, okay? 
Never is there a fucking woman in these movies. Only Shirley Temple, who's a child. And she's always sitting on these adult ass men wearing scarves at dinner party with all these men while she entertains them in her diapers. If you don't know what that is, I don't know what to say. If you don't know what that is, like, what do you think that is? What do you think that is? That is grooming the public to think. And we're all like, Shirley Temple's so cute. Why didn't somebody stand up and go, where the, f why is there 40 year old men with a toddler or a six year old, which is a little bit bigger than a toddler, but she's a child in those little baby doll dresses, little diapies and little frilly underwear sucking a lollipop running around, why, 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 why was that movie <laughs> greenlit? I'm just asking why, right? Because they want you to think it's fucking normal for children to sit on men's laps. First of all, children shouldn't be sitting on anybody's lap that isn't connected to them. And as a mother, you kind of watch your kids, right? I mean... Anyway, uh, toddlers and tiaras. What the fuck is that? John Benet Ramsey. What is that? She was groomed in that family. That's why they keep telling you the John Benet Ramsey case. We have evidence. We have new DNA. Then out with the new DNA. Tell us who the DNA belongs to. If you have the DNA, put it on the table. But I guarantee you, you're never going to say the real DNA with that because we all know who did that. Okay. It was a business buy off. Oh, I can't. I'll just go insane. I will go insane. I will go crazy. So, um, yeah, we have poor John Bonet Ramsey, and it wasn't her brother. Stop saying stupid shit. She drank his milk. She ate his pineapple. Yeah, so he killed her because that's normal. Because that's fucking normal. <laughs> yeah, he killed her. Okay, sure. Um, all righty. Yes, Drew Barrymore is another one. But Drew Barrymore, I know, the older sister, which leads to the father. Drew Barrymore's family, the Barrymore's, I mean, look at her father. He was homeless. So he basically, his mind was fragmented for whatever reason. And he was homeless, alcoholic, drug addict, right? Her mother did not believe her. She tried to tell her. I'm talking about, I thought it was the brother this whole time. It wasn't the brother from what I got. It wasn't the brother. She was sold and it was a business ritualized. It may have been in conjunction with the oldest brother, which was not a 10-year-old or a seven-year-old Burke, or however old he was, I don't remember. She was six and he was either older or younger, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, Brooke Shields' mom, yeah, Brooke Shields' mom. I mean, even when you look at um, that asshole Barbara Walters, and I'm sorry, she had to an adopt a child too. Because no one would fuck her. Okay, sorry. Did that come out of my mouth? I'm sorry. Anyway, Barbara Walters, born into a family, or she wouldn't have had the job she had. When you understand that, they're not brilliant. They're not better than you. They're not Heather O'Rourke. I can't say her name. Henry Winkler. Henry Winkler. And I've said this. Henry Winkler went on camera after that little girl, Heather O'Rourke, passed away from sepsis, which of course is bacteria in the body. And you can get sepsis when you give birth and you pull the bowel down. Her bowel was ruptured. The mother denies it. The mother's entitled to all her delusional whatever. Henry Winkler turned around and said on an interview, oh, her father, she killed herself or something. He knows Henry Winkler knows exactly why she died because he was one of them. He was one of them. He was one of them. And they all sit there like they're all fucking great because they do it. Which I'm going to go right back to this because I can't stop myself. Madeline Soto, if that's her name, I hope I'm saying it correctly. Poor little girl. She was born on February 22nd of 2011. She had just turned 13. I unfortunately listened to... Uh, thing online that talked about what the um, what the police found on this idiot's phone, the mother's boyfriend, the mother's boyfriend. Okay, and I'm I'm going to say this again: the mother's boyfriend, who is showing 
And the way to get even with that guy in prison is to tell him that you're going to fuck him like his father fucked him, okay? Because that's what went wrong there. But that guy had pictures not only of himself doing bad things to her with his body parts, which apparently are identifiable because there are markings on them, okay? There are markings on them. But he had close-up shots of not the woman area, but the, the behind area, just like I told you. Why are they so obsessed with that area of the body? Okay, so when I read that, I went, this is very interesting because that is a porn thing that they want everybody to do it up the backside, okay? Everybody, it should be up the ass, up the ass, right? This little girl was killed... And he had photos of that part of her body. I believe she was pregnant, okay? I believe she was pregnant. I believe the mother knows it. I believe the mother was molested. I believe the mother in her childhood actually, I'm going to say this. I believe the boyfriend and the mother participated. I believe the boyfriend has done this to another child. And um, yeah. The mother's a fucking asshole, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because she sat there. It is her child. It is not this man's child. This man, she's been dating for five years or whatever. So he apparently has been raping this young girl since for two years. So since she was 11, which was probably the age it started with him. Because understand, they repeat the patterns. That's why all of us, have a job to stop the sexual abuse of children. Even if it happened to us, even if it happens in our family, even if we go, I can't believe that Aunt Gerda touched my kid, whoever, you have to, you have to stop it, okay? You have to. This woman was such a fucking asshole, and I blame a mother. You are a mother, that, that, that makes you, yes, it's connected. Exactly. It's exactly. It's connected that, that guy, first of all, he won't last in prison. What a piece of shit. What a piece of complete garbage. He shouldn't even have a trial. He should be taken off the earth right away. It does open portals. That's what they're doing. And they're too stupid to fucking know what they're doing. I blame the mother a hundred percent. I blame the mother. I blame the mother. Like if you're, you know, sh that little girl was pregnant. This guy killed her so that the evidence would be gone. But the funny thing is, is he was inept and pathetic and he probably can't get an erection with an adult. And the woman didn't want to lose his money because that's what we're talking about. It's always about money. So, excuse me, the mother was probably, that guy was paying. So she indirectly propositioned her daughter out there so that she could have, some some place to live or whatever fucking weirdo thing that this guy provided for her. This guy, though, was raped by a man in his childhood, period. And I believe that this is something he saw with other males around him in childhood. So you see, he's so pathetic that he couldn't heal himself, so he had to kill another person. This is what the problem is. If you're a man and you get raped as a child, no one ever talks about it. It has to be spoken about. It has to be spoken about, even if you are a man. You have to say, like the Menendez brothers spoke out loud, but of course they locked their asses up and acted like, oh, eh, we can't hear you. We can't fucking hear you. Those poor kids, not only did they get raped, beaten, brutalized, and put in a position to have to murder their parents, you don't have to do that, but sometimes you want to do it because you're triggered, okay, after going through that. And they were locked up. It's been 30 years, I think since 1989 or something. Hi, Anthony. Um, since 89 or something, they've been in prison. Now, um, Jose Menendez, his mother raped him. It apparently is common knowledge in their family. So your cuckoo bird mother touched you as a child, okay, your nut job of a mother, touched you, and apparently the other siblings of the mother knew about it, and the father let the mother do it? What 
the fuck? So now when Jose Menendez grows up, he says, I'm going to sodomize my sons because no one stopped it happening to me. Yeah. Now, there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jesus. 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 So, yeah, but that's, I literally read stuff talking about the mother of Jose Menendez doing that. And, the, and since he was three, like somebody walked in on him uh, giving her son a hand job. If you knew that back then and you said nothing, you are also responsible for what happened. This the cat coming in, y'all. Look. Tallulah. There. She said hi, y'all. Um, so now you wonder, I mean, why do we even, why do we even question this in our society? Why do we think it's not true? It's so true. And then we have a president who literally took showers with his teenage daughter that made her a sex addict, which is, by the way, for all you people out there that hate the sex workers understand, male or female. Now, I'm just going to tell you my experience. And I was in the industry two months after I turned 14. So I turned 14 in August. I left home in October, which would be Canadian Thanksgiving. And I literally was up on a stage the next week. So I was in it, okay? But not necessarily as a prostitute on the street. I didn't like touching people, but had it been offered, I may have done it. Anyway, the point is, the very strong point is people love to call those women and men sluts and this and their home wreckers. Thing is, when I worked at Children of the Night, the male prostitutes were mostly raped by their stepfathers in the house and thrown out of the house for being gay. True story. Okay. Yeah, I was just a baby. That's why I say my white privilege didn't really work out so well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, I did already talk about this. I talk about things repeatedly, but when you, when you look at it, the way that our society, okay, our society is positioned, nobody listens to the children. Then they call the victims because you really like the stepfather of Madeline Soto, he's the one that needs to be called the names, beaten and eradicated. He's the one, not Madeline. Madeline is, now see what he's done. I'm going to tell you in the metaphysical what this, this piece of shit. I know they blame the victim, scapegoated. This piece of shit man who was the mother's boyfriend, okay? What they've done in their complicit shame, it's shame. So he was raped. She was raped. I'm talking about Madeline's parents. It's obvious. They wear big signs on their head that say, hi, I was sodomized as a child, beaten and raped. But what they don't do is they never deal with their own shame. They don't go to a therapist and say, I'm having weird thoughts. I'm having OCD. I'm having manic attacks. I feel like looking at kids. I like child porn. Whatever it is, they're not telling their therapist. So what do they do with the victim? The reason and what they do with the victim is they put their shame into the victim, okay? So Madeline becomes a receptacle of the shame that these adults, mother and stepfather, whatever he is, boyfriend, carry, okay? So it is exactly that. It is the shame that those two adults carry on a metaphysical or occult level they are putting it on that child, which is why that little child, if she had have lived, if she had have lived, would have been, um, thank you all for the super chats. I'm just looking, thank you so much. Had that little child lived, she would have probably been on drugs and then we would have called her a whore and a drug addict. She would have been traumatized and then like Biden's daughter, who wrote about it in her own journal that they found after the fact and authenticated, but we choose not to listen to a man that says he likes when little kids rub the hair on his legs in a pool. And we think that that's fucking normal because it's not, okay? And, it, and stop saying it's normal and fucking sweeping it under the rug. It's not normal. Anyway, Ashley Biden, she became a sex addict and a drug addict, which is why she was in rehab. 
and she spoke out. And you know what every single person said? But Trump does it to his daughter. And I'm like, I've never heard Trump's daughter say that. Listen to the person. Listen to the person. She said that. She was in that. Look at Hunter Biden. If he's not an example of, I fucked my dead brother's wife. I'm sorry, excuse me? I fucked my dead brother's wife. <laughs> what? What did you just do? What? Yeah, they're both drug addicts, sex addicts. Um, and, they, you know, I mean, and Hunter's a perfect example because he went and had a kid with a stripper. All those men in the strip clubs, I'm sorry if I'm offending you. All those men come from it in their family. Sometimes it doesn't happen to them, but they have a parent it happened to or a parent that, that does that. And that's why they kind of think that way. So it's so cyclical. Showers with daddy. Who fucking showers with their father? It's not dysfunctional. It's grooming and sexually abusive. It's more than dysfunctional. It is, yes, Hunter comes from that kind of family and was traumatized. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, poor little Madeline. And I bet you she was pregnant. I, I would almost guarantee you she's pregnant. That's why that piece of shit, piece of shit did that to her. I don't even, I yes, his tapes. Whose tapes? Hunter Biden's tapes or the dead, I mean, the the little girl that passed away. Uh, who's this Hunter guy? Biden's kid. <laughs> Biden's kid. Um, yeah, Justin Bieber had the same thing happen. But here's the thing. Just because you grow up and you're victimized, you may victimize somebody else. But once you know better, you have to do better. And it's not acceptable. I want you guys to start thinking of this way. When you go out there and you look at Taylor Swift and you're like... She's a billionaire. She wrote her own songs all by herself. No, she didn't. Okay? Shut up. She's a billionaire. She sold out. Stop idolizing it. Watch these people. And you know I talk about it nonstop, incessantly. Uh, yeah, smell your hair later. <laughs> but porn addiction comes from sexualization of children. Or you can have people that watch porn in front of your kids you can have all of that shit and then it makes them sex addicts. And usually with men, they're gay. I mean, Charlie Sheen, all of that shit. But understand, they're billionaires because they chose to sell out. That goes for Justin Bieber. When he was old enough to say something, he tried and then he went back in it. So that's also a choice because you think your money matters. So can somebody tell me? I know, Tallulah is right there. She's giving me the stare down. So, of course... Of course she sold out. It's so obvious. <laughs> it's so obvious, okay? So obvious. I like Labradite. Uh, Taylor Swift looks like a boy. Yes, because she's tall and thin. I don't know if she is or not, but they love inversion. They love all kinds of things like that. That's what I'm saying to you going back to Shirley Temple Black. She, I know, she's directly... I know, look, she's going to clean herself. Speaking of strippers who shower... <laughs> um, Sold out. Here's what sold out is. So I'm going to explain it in the simplest terms, but this is what celebrities do in a different way, but it's very similar. They want to be part of the club. What is another word for club? Gang. They want to be part of the gang. Okay. So let's think of the gang that we've all heard of. MS-13. Gang bangers. So in order to become an MS-13 or any gang, not just them, but any gang that is like MS-13, they have to be jumped in. So they have to go out and kill somebody because in the act of killing somebody, they are now blackmailable. In other words, you committed a murder. We've got shit on you. You will do what we say. See what I'm saying? Think mafia. Think all of that. Then go to Hollywood. They're all so narcissistic. They want the fame. So when you look at them up there singing and doing whatever, understand it's out of complete greed. They took their money. They did what the gang told them to do, which is usually ritualized sexual abuse while being filmed. Remember, Epstein's Island had an island for 
your sick fucking pedophiles and your ritualistic satanic shit going on over here. They are bought and sold. That's why Julia Asshole Roberts said that how much she admired Dr. Fauci. She's like, I just love you. Can you tell us why we can you tell us why we have to take the vaccine? Shut up, you stupid asshole. Who are you to tell us anything? Get off the TV. Fuck you. Um, the TV, this is why I don't watch TV. The TV is a propaganda tool. And I'm going to tell you something else. And you guys are going to hate me and tell me I'm a Trump supporter, which I'm not. However, I do appreciate that gas was cheaper and we didn't have all these people crossing the border. Because I do live in Los Angeles and I live in a tent community. Meaning I live in a house, but there's a tent community and they break into cars and shit like that. Anyway, okay. They tried to take Trump off the ballot. I'm assuming, now I don't know much about how you get on the ballot, but I'm assuming that names are put on the ballot, ballot and then whoever gets the most votes is the person for this side and the person for that side. And then the runner-ups for the other positions in government. I believe. I don't know. Having said that, this man was on the ballot by the same people who pay taxes like you do, and they wanted to block him. Okay. So does that not make you think that we are in Russia? Because they say that shit happens in Russia, but I'm noticing it's happening here. I don't care if you like him or not. That has nothing to do with taxpayers' rights to a democracy, to whoever they voted onto the ballot, to have the right to vote for that person while they are on the ballot. You can't just go like a pussy ass bitch and suck your thumb and say, hey, take off that person because I think they're going to win. What the hell is that? That's not a democracy. That is what they describe Russia as. And that's exactly what they say China is. They call that a dictatorship. I'm not saying you agree. I'm not saying you agree with the person. That's not, it's not, that doesn't fucking matter. It matters that people who pay taxes, okay, who pay taxes have the right to put whatever person that wins on their side on the ballot. Oh my God. Right or wrong? Just asking. I'm <laughs> just asking. So like, like what, and is it that bad if somebody wants to vote for Biden or vote for Trump? I mean, I think you're idiots if you vote. That's my personal opinion, but it is your right. So even if I don't like your candidate, whichever one you don't like, then I, I'm confused like why you don't want your fellow taxpayers to have the right to vote. That's all I'm asking. Like, I don't get it. Why shouldn't you have the right to vote? You may not like it. Oh, I know what the government is. I'm just saying all these people blah, blah on about Trump like he's done something worse than the other ones. <laughs> what? What has he done worse than the other ones? And his daughter didn't write a whole fucking diary about taking showers with him. But yet they accuse him of that. But his kids don't say that. And I'm not saying it doesn't go on their elite family. So I tend to think it goes on all the way around. However, Biden's daughter said it out of her own mouth and people overlook that and say, I'm going to vote for him. So you're voting for a pedophile because his own child said that out of her mouth. Everybody pays taxes. That's what I'm saying. I don't like the people who voted for Biden. But if you're a taxpayer, you have the right. Should I say take him off the ballot? What the hell is that? What is that? Should I say cripple the guy at the race? Because I think he's going to beat my candidate at the race? Like, should I hobble him? What, 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 what is that? What is that? The hell is that? What, what fucking country do I live in, Russia? Yeah, I know they all have skeletons. I mean, it's just, it's obvious. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, what is that? That's China, that's Russia. Yeah, there's Tallulah. She's <laughs> gonna stare at everybody. Um, so it's just weird. It's very weird, okay? It's weird. Did Ivanka say it? I never heard Ivanka say it. But if she said it, then it's equally as offensive. I expect it from anybody in government that they sodomize and rape their children. That's what I think of the government. Every single government candidate across both sides. 
that is what I think. So when people say I vote for this or I vote for that, I'm like, I think that they're trying to control me. So I vote for them not being able to do so. That's what I vote for them. But yeah, I think anybody in government is of that ilk. That's what I think. I think they're all participating in child trafficking and all participating in the abuse of our tax dollars, clearly. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> true story. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, they're all puppets. You can't say not one or the other. Why you wanna control mankind? What's with you? <laughs> like, what is that about? Like, what? No. Um, and the eye twitches back. Look, there it goes twitching. Um, the other thing is, when you're looking at these cases like that little Madeline Soto, getting back to her, what our society has done has indoctrinated people into the grandiose expression of everything in porn is good and this is good. And I'm not saying it can't be if needed, but when we're focusing more and more on younger and youthful, that's directing it in a certain way. And that's what's happening. That's, and you're entitled to love anybody you want. You know what the other thing was I was thinking of? And that's what's happening. But here's the other thing I was thinking of. So, okay, so you remember QAnon. I was not a QAnon. I got accused of it. Every time you say something, the lawsuit I was in with Tracy Twyman's husband, I can say it now because I'm not in it. Oh, God. Tracy Twyman did like 16 books. She was a public figure. So I can speak on her. Anyway, she was a public fucking figure and she worked with Isaac Cappy. Anyway, Isaac Cappy died. He offed himself. She offed herself. Two months in between. He was like May. She was like July. And that's how I got sued because I went, um, I went uh, and did the radio show where she was a co, uh, co-anchor person, uh, co, what is it? Co-worker of the radio show. And when she died, they asked me to come on and pick up what I picked up. So I picked up what I pick up, whatever I picked up. I had to transcribe the radio show so that I could put it into the court. So I transcribed the radio show. So I knew exactly what I said. I had an idea of what I said, but you never know what you actually say. So when I transcribed it, I said there was a, like a husband and wife team that took her out, okay? Did not say the husband. Obviously, if there's two people, one of them hasn't committed suicide and therefore is not dead. Therefore, that leaves the husband out. All right, so just so we're fucking clear. I didn't even know she was still married at the time. The lawsuit where the husband of the dead woman, aka Tracy Twyman, in the legal paperwork, which is online. So if you're thinking of fucking suing me again, fuck off. Um, it was online and it says that she was a Trump supporter. This husband of the woman that killed herself, it wasn't murder. Remember that? I say it was. That's what I felt from the spirit. So I'm going to say it was. But anyway, he said it wasn't. The police report said it wasn't. He decided to open a lawsuit where... He described his wife as becoming schizophrenic in her 40s, being a Trump supporter. So he put that in a lawsuit. What planet do I live on where who the woman in the country of the land of the free has the right to choose a Republican or a Democrat, just saying, whether he agrees with her or not, who writes that in a lawsuit? Who is that mental? when your partner commits suicide, that you decide to say she was unhinged because she voted for Trump. That should be offensive to everybody because it means if you don't vote the way the group wants you to vote, then you're unhinged. And then he said she was a QAnon follower. So when I got wrote, written, written up in... Um, uh, no, I have no idea who Ryan whatever is. So when I got written up in Forbes magazine, they called me a Trump supporter. Now, again, I will repeat, I do not vote. I will not vote. I don't want to vote, okay? I don't believe in a system. It's broken. Therefore, I don't believe our votes do any good. If you think they do good, please go and vote. It is your right in this country as a free person. 
However, I know we're not free. They lie. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just saying. The, the Forbes magazine article called me a Trump supporter and a QAnon follower. So it's a way where they like to call you crazy, okay? Now, I'm not a QAnon follower. I had a friend that was a Q follower, but I couldn't understand for the life of me why the QAnon people, okay, why the QAnon, I was in Forbes, look up the lawsuit with Tracy Twyman. It says Bella the Psychic, you know, they make me seem like I'm on a, what did they call it? A crank radio show. Um, yeah, the dead woman participated on that radio show. So like now you're mocking her that way. Anyway, the writer in Forbes said that, okay? So my point is QAnon kept saying, everybody kept saying JFK Jr. was alive. And I'm like, no, that guy went down in the plane. But then somebody said he was switched out as a form of blackmail. That's why the real JFK Jr. is alive. It wasn't the JFK Jr. that we knew, the hot guy on the skateboard in Central Park. Not that guy. Not the guy on Seinfeld. Yeah, QAnon, which means questions answered, okay? Questions asked, questions answered. Like, oh, that's a grime now. God forbid we fucking ask anything. I actually believe that theory. I actually believe that theory. That made sense to me. It hit me as true. So kind of interesting. A lot of things that were written in QAnon. I know, right? Times Square. That's what he said. He held me responsible for people thinking he murdered his wife. I'm like, dude, I didn't even know you existed. He kept saying it was intentional and all this shit. And I'm going to tell you guys again, when you get in a lawsuit like that. Oh God, my eyes twitching again. When you get in a lawsuit like that again, I had property, okay? I have property, so I can be affected because so many people said, oh, you don't have property, it doesn't matter. I do have property. So, two houses. So, meaning two properties, okay? So, and I live in neither one. <laughs> I, I live here. So, yet again. Anyway, um, you can be sued, okay? But you still have to be found guilty first or whatever or uh, of causal Secondly, that's a money grab, okay? That's a money grab. And when you try to grab money through a lawsuit, people get very scared, okay? They get very fucking scared. So the reality is, until a judgment goes through, nobody can take your property. So don't bother using a lawyer for little trivia. You're getting sued for um, defamation, this and that. Understand defamation, it has to be proven untrue. <laughs> but don't, I didn't use a lawyer. That's what I was written up for. I did not use a lawyer. I, well, I asked Bobby helped me a lot. John helped me a lot, but I filled out the paperwork myself. Okay. And that, and then you put your property into a trust. Exactly. Done. Bingo. So that's exactly right. However, you don't need a lawyer because some of these people paid 10, 15, 20,000 to answer questions. I finally said, I'll see you in court. Stop asking me these fucking questions. You can answer yourself. And like I said, when you go pro se or pro per, you have more latitude with the court because they think you're a fucking idiot for answering your questions. So you can actually get your point across because you're not supposed to speak in legalese. So anyway, when this fool's lawyer contacted me, I had her write it with prejudice, which means I can't be sued for the same things again. That's what I had done. She wanted to drop the case. I beat four out of the five, and then we were going to court. I said, I'll just see you in fucking court. <laughs> I was the court advocate and got to say so much more. Exactly, exactly. Um, no, but it was really funny because I beat four of the five, which is mentioned in the article, and then the fifth thing where he said, I intentionally something, blah, blah, blah. I can't even remember. Give me such a headache. It did give me a headache. So I would just go online, write the documents and you can hand write it in, but you have to answer it. You don't have to have a lawyer. You don't have to have a lawyer. Okay. You don't answer it. I didn't fucking do this. This is an abuse of court power. Uh, they tried to, you know what happened? They tried to get me to pay for this fucking asshole's legal fees. Excuse me. I did not cause this problem. 
I did not cause this problem. And therefore, I'm not paying his legal fees because he chooses to be a money-grubbing whore off his wife's dead body. No, 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 no. So, number one, I'm not paying your legal fees. So remember that. You have to answer that. I don't feel I'm responsible for to pay these legal fees because I feel that this is a frivolous lawsuit or whatever it is you feel, right? You have to answer. In this particular court case, they gave the legal fees to somebody who didn't answer the paperwork. It's as simple as that. That's not even fair, just, or legal, but that's the court system is so broken. If that guy or anybody who has a frivolous lawsuit had to pay the bills if they lost, we wouldn't have this kind of shit happening in court, right? So there you go. I don't do a skin routine. I, I have all kinds of shit on me. I just wash my face with Neutrogena. I put vitamin E oil, rose oil, whatever's in my bathroom. I drink water and I sweat. That's what I do. So you have to understand, you don't have to allow people to bully you. Now, if you're in jail for murder, you probably need a lawyer, right? Oh, God, yes, yes. <laughs> Somebody, okay, whatever. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, yes, I do believe Madeline Soto's mother will go to jail. She'll plead differently because she'll plead broken, but she helped, actually, is what I feel. So that's what I feel. Um, yeah, what is with the trolls on this channel? Like, y'all, you guys, you fuckers. Why you got to say stupid shit? Oprah is taking that weight loss drug. Well, it ain't helping, okay? So why do people keep saying this shit? What is wrong with y'all? I pray to God in the name of Jesus, amen. I believe in Jesus. I pray to God. I have my entire life. No, they're not slandering in Forbes. They're saying what the lawsuit was about. So I pray to Jesus like every day in the name of Jesus. Amen. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what to say. Don't know what to say. Am I not allowed to do that? Can I not do that? <laughs> Am I not allowed to have my own opinion because you fucking weirdos say shit? <laughs> Again, fuck off. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> I mean, come on. Oh, my God. Um, they say Ozempic's dangerous. I don't take Ozempic, but they say it's dangerous. I can believe it's dangerous. It kind of paralyzes your stomach, so it seems to me that that would be... Yeah, foster care is trafficking. Yes, God is magnificent, and I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sorry, it's a true story. Just saying... So, no, I'm not a Satanist if you want. But if you want to be one, that's up to you. And you can do what you want to do. But, like, don't speak what other people are when you know they're not that. Because it makes you a liar. But, again, if you're a Satanist, you would be a fucking liar. <laughs> right? Hello. The biggest liar on the planet is Satanists and Satan, which is Luciferian, which is Baphomet, which is the beast system, which is the Freemasons, and go on down the motherfucking line. Yeah, the eclipses are going to open a bunch. I had gas. I'm starving. Are you starving? Oh, my God. I bet you're starving. Well, your head's starving. Are you really starving? I know what you're saying, though. Um, I was trafficked in the foster. Oh, my God. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I bet. The foster care system is horrible. Uh, only one hater. You named him. <laughs> I know, right? These fucking people. You can't fuck with me. You can't fuck with me. Just, I'm unfuck withable, unfuck withable, whatever that is. You just can't fuck with me, okay? You think you can, I don't care. See, that's what we need to teach our children not to give two shits what anybody says, okay? In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you. Um, not, not to get pagans are entitled. I, the last time pagan ritual is earthbound ritual, okay? So. You have to really research. I'm talking about the ones that think it's okay to do the shit they do as long as it suits unfuck with a boy. That's it. As long as it's okay to, with them to do. In other words, 
oh, do as thou wilt, okay? They follow Aleister Crowley, big pedophile, ugly fucking troll of a man, real weirdo, sociopath, narcissist, Freud, they all quote Freud, like psychiatry. That's one thing Tom Cruise had it right about the pharmaceutical and the medicine because they give all these kids psych meds and it fucks with your brain. That is true. So unfuck with a <laughs> I'm going to keep trying it. Um, but anyway, yeah, I know. I know, George W. I know. It's Barbara Bush's daddy. But it's just, you know, Freud... Freud, I mean, if it's not obvious, all Freud talked about was incest. And he was notorious, and I believe it was with his daughters. So, and then there's fetus in a jar, which floors me till this day that that woman went on camera, Barbara Bush, with her thick neck and her man face and hands, and went on camera and talked about fetus in a fucking jar. <laughs> oh my God. No, look it up with Larry King. No, they're so sick. They're so sick. If you let your kids watch t that pickled fetus, it's a ritual. It th She did it. I didn't. People are like, damn. I'm like, I'm not the fucking asshole with the president that went on camera as the president's mother of two wife and mother, even though she's a dude, went on there and talked about how the doctor gave me back my fetus in a jar because they don't even give me back my fucking teeth, okay? I have my wisdom tooth pulled. Did I get to take it home with me? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I should ask for it, though. But you get my point. April 8th is the eclipse, Michelle. You like Pagey. You guys are eclipse babies. I am going to do a video on the eclipse, but it is going to be when I get back from my fire camp. I'm just going to put it that way. Fire, aerial, burlesque, all of that. When I get back from that, it'll be after that. So when I get back from that, Yes. Yes. I'm a Leo, unfortunately, or fortunately. A triple Leo. <laughs> if it doesn't show. <laughs> if it doesn't show, that's what I am. Um, yeah, it's definitely white privilege. Exactly. Because, yeah. Thank you guys for the super chats, all of you. Yeah, you know what? Um, yeah, I know. Barbara Bush with that thick neck. I'm Look, lipstick on me. Okay, look. Mm. there anyway yeah dad of barbara bush there you go yeah exactly um i kept my first back surgery hardware how interesting i'm glad they gave it to you so you could look at it that must be fascinating like what i heard it hurts to pull it out a friend of keith who broke his leg right after keithy died the same day later that day um, had that rod in his leg and that just has to hurt because it, the bone grows around it then they break it and pull it out oh my god I can't even I can't even um, yeah it's gonna be fun don't text me and ask me if I can do a reading because <laughs> I'm gonna say that's it ban block <laughs> no I'm not taking that phone I will answer the text question reading so that's what that phone's for um, so yeah right <laughs> I know. I understand covering your neck, though. Like, look, the sun doesn't hit here on me. So I have all these, like, freckles around it. But so I cover it because, like, I haven't had a facelift yet. I'm not saying I won't get one. I'm just saying I haven't had a neck lift or a facelift. Maybe I should. All these 40-year-olds are having them. I don't know. Something about me doesn't feel like doing it. Let's see, my granddaughter is, oh, my God. I just missed what you just said. Okay, Babs. <laughs> uh -huh. Magnesium is good to take. Okay, I don't know. Why did one of the... Okay, first of all, Obama's kids. I've got to say this again. All right. Michael Obama can't have kids. So the kids, okay, the children of the... Bo I'm, no, I'm not doing it right now, but I'm just... See, look. Uh, look, double chin. John always takes pictures of me with Meadow and I can see my triple chin. I'm like, God, I got to wear a turtleneck more. So around that, because it's so fun to snuggle and sleep with her. Oh my God, it's so fun. The minute she just closes her and cuddles, I'm trying to get her used to me because she's so used to mommy and daddy and rascal. I'm trying to get her so used to me. So when we fall asleep, it's so pleasurable that I enjoy it. 
because it's like when my kids were little and sleeping with them with their little face close by was the best thing ever. Um, yeah, I don't feel like it right now. I just can't explain it. I just don't want them cutting into my neck. So Michelle, Michael, Michelle, whatever, we're calling her, him, them, whatever. Um, just Google Sarah Jessica Parker and Michelle Obama and look at the two bodies side by side. Then make your assumption from that. And please don't tell me Venus Williams is a girl either because I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Okay, so anyway, um, they have people in the script, Matrix people, Illuminati people, Satanic people, Luciferian, Baphomet people, Freemasons, probably more like Freemasons in the government. They have those people that rent their children to them. Remember, there was a guy that testified against Obama in the, is she female? Really? Okay. Yeah. Female like a linebacker. Oh, it's Serena. Thank you, Serena. Sorry. That's the one I meant. Yes, women do come in all shapes and sizes, but I'm just going to say to you, there's a thing in the industry we're talking about. Listen to me. There is a thing where they invert them. So when you have a girl baby in utero, they may put male hormones. Or when you're a boy in utero, they may put female hormones. Or you may come out like Cher's daughter, Chastity, and become Chaz. Or you may come out like Warren Beatty's daughter, Catherine, and become Scott. Or you may come out like Megan Fox's three boys, and all three your boys may be girls and want to wear tutus to school. Or you could be Charlize Theron and adopt two from two different countries, kids, third world countries, black children, both boys who also want to wear tutus because that's normal. And that's a fucking, what is that? Oh, right, right. Okay. And then there's Magic Johnson. You could give birth to your son who is a girl. But why? And Caitlin. Caitlyn Jenner, way back when. That's part of the inversion, okay? Part of the inversion. Now, way back in the day, my friend used to go to the same hairdresser as Caitlyn Jenner, who was Bruce. And he had breast implants 25, 30 years ago, just so you know. Like, he was already of that mindset. He could conceivably be somebody who was born like that. But more importantly, remember... All of these celebrity, it is part of the religion. When you tell them that, like going to midnight mass and not eating anything but fish on Fridays, then they get it. But um, I know that because I know somebody who went to the same hairdresser and they talked about it back then. And my friend was in the industry. So yeah, Sarah Jessica Parker was inverted in my opinion. Um, yeah, he had boobs. Yeah. But my friend told me that before he ever came out, like way, way before. Just like my other friend that told me about Bill Cosby. They get mind controlled and they have to continue doing blackmailable, evidential things in order to keep them in line. That's all. That's all. So that's what we're looking at. Yeah, Janice Dickinson's pretty funny. But they have to keep it up. And then, yeah, they do. Exactly. But that's, that's what happens. I, you know. I'm not the one in the industry. I just happen to be around it. I want you guys to keep your eyes open, though. There's no need for anybody to idolize these people. You can interact with them. You can even be friends with them. But understand, God always puts his with theirs. This is a spiritual war. So if you are friends with them, you can be nice. You can be polite. But know that they see things way different than you. And that's fine for them. But no, Catholics are not Satanists. I didn't say Catholics were Satanists. I said Catholics are born into families. And I want you, again, I want you to hear me. If you're born into a Catholic family, just because your parents tell you, you got to get up and go to fucking midnight mass and say a bunch of Hail Marys and take the fucking blood and drink the, and eat the body and drink the blood of Christ. What are you doing? Do you think for yourself or do you think God wants you to do that with a bunch of fucking men in robes who are sodomites, basically, okay? Do you think God says, yeah, that's what you as a Catholic got to do? Or do you think it was contrived to control the people? Yeah. 
Understand, when you say all your Hail Marys and all of your incantations while well, that guy in a robe, a dress basically, that guy in a skirt with his red shoes on, do you think that you're not invoking energy in when there's so many fucking people saying the same shit? Do you think? I'm just fucking asking. Do you think for yourself or do you go, oh, I'm Catholic because I was born that way? How about you just know that God lives inside you and that's what God does? All of these religions are nonsense. You either know God or you don't know God. Why do you need a guy in a robe to fucking <laughs> tell you, you know, whatever? I mean, what? No. As a little kid, luckily I was raised by an agnostic, agnostic, scientific, atheist type person. And my mother was a Christian scientist, but we never went to church. I always believed in God because I felt it. It came to me that this was the way. Your soul knows what it knows. Unless you're shut down. And the churches and all religions are designed to shut you down because they're made up by men. And that does not, I am not saying God is not real. I am not saying Buddha, Jesus, Allah are not real. What I'm saying is man who has a church is full of shit, passing money around, bullshit. And bullshit. And bullshit. <laughs> and bullshit. That's man. You know what man does. I mean, look at the fucking elections. You know what they do, right? You don't need a church. You can go if you find there are some good ones. My friend Lori has a good one and she sings like an angel. So she goes because it makes her feel comfortable. And that is good. That is her choice. So if you want to go because it's your choice, but because you're born into a family and your stupid parents tell you, why don't you think for yourself? Why would you even presume? I don't get it. <laughs> I know, right? I know. I mean, what the hell? They mock God all the time. They're always mocking God. It's the only thing that you're allowed to make fun of is Jesus. You can't make fun of Muslims. You can't make fun of fucking Jewish people. You can't make fun of Scientologists. But you can say anything you want about Jesus derogatory. You know why? Yeah, me thinks it might work a bit energetically. So understand, when you're in friendships with people that are compliant to that belief system, you are working one side of the spiritual space and they're working the other. So God always puts his there. And maybe you need to see what that's really about. Just saying. Every time Satan brings one of his, God brings one of his. And so there's a mirror there. So to balance. So for every fucktard, there's somebody who's not a fucktard. That's it. That's it. Just saying. Yeah, they can only make young pro boxer. I don't know who that fucking guy is, but I will look it up. Okay, you all, I've got to feed the hungry person back here. Person cat, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty. I got to feed her. <laughs> I got to feed her. Okay, I'm saying it. I've got to feed her. Okay, bye, you guys. I just thought I'd come on. I just thought I'd come on and I, I think I might open a couple of spots in May if you're asking, but it'll be later tonight or tomorrow. So if you don't get there quick, they'll be sold out. Don't tell me there's no times. That would mean they're sold out. So I may open up two days, but I can't go much farther ahead than that. Because why? It gives me anxiety because you know that. Okay. Bye, you guys. Have fun. I will see you when I come back. That's where I am. I will see you. Yeah, she's hungry. I fed her chicken earlier, fresh chicken. She really likes it. We had chicken together. She didn't have the Dijon mustard with her chicken. I did, but she didn't like mustard. So I got to get her real kitty food. Okay, bye, you guys. <laughs> bye. Oh, ah.